everyone, today I'm going to show you how to work with Expo Router to create an Expo React Native app with navigation and app. I'm going to work through how to add different tabs and how to have a combination of stack and tab navigation inside a single app. I'm going to start off with the um, default template and from there I'll add a few pages, show you how to use um, the router also show you how to use links and um, parameters as well. So now my app's created, I'm going to go ahead and start navigating into that directory. I've set up a shortcut for code dot that will open up Visual Studio Code. I'll link my video for that if you're wanting to set that up to make things super easy. I'm also going to run the npx expo start command and open up my iOS simulator so that we can sort of have a look at what our default starting state is. So when it loads, we can see we've got two tabs here, a home and explore tab. Um, if we go to the app, that is where all our different routes are. So we've got the tabs for any routes. We've got a layout that has our stack um, controller and a not found page that if we tried to link to like a, a route that didn't exist, it would show and allow you to go home. So I'm just going to add a different index page. This is going to be the page that um, people will land on when they open my app. It's not going to include the tabs. It's going to be separate. Maybe I want part of my app to have tabs and part to not. So I just want to have that different sort of controls depending on where I am in the app. Just trying to show you guys a bit of everything here. Go import a few of these components that have been set up as part of this template. I've also imported a um, link from Expo Router that will allow me to just basically create a link in app that uh, links to a different page. You can also use the router directly and control like whether you want to replace a route on the stack or whether you want to push another route to the stack. That will give you like a bit more fine grain control. So I'm just starting with a themed view and some themed text. Just going to say hello friends here. Just a really basic page. It's not about the page. It's more about how the different routing works between different screens that I want to show you. I'm also going to go ahead and go to that layout file. This is where my stack um, is, and I can go ahead and add my new screen here. I've named it index, so that's what I'm going to name it here. So it knows how to find it. I could keep this header shown to be false, but I want to actually just show it with the title. If you have this, then you can set different header options, like um, whether there are any action buttons in the header. I'm just going to give it a header, header title of home. So just hit R in there to reload. You can see that it's loading my home page now. I don't have a link there to get to the tabs, but I'm going to want to add one. So that's why I've imported the link. You specify the href, just like if you were creating like a website or something like that. It gives you sort of an idea of what you can navigate to. I'm just going to go to tabs to start. And it's just going to say go to tabs. Obviously this isn't how you'd build a UI. It wouldn't be so blatant. But um, for the purposes of um, my app it's simple enough. I'm also just going to um, show that header for the tabs as well. That's going to show... Um, basically have an easy button to go back from. So you can see I've got that button there. Um, if you didn't want to show it, that's fine too. You, I'm going to show you how to add your own button that would um, allow you to go back. So I'm going to go add it in here. So I'm just importing 
use router here. I'm going to use that to get the router, which I can then call to um, navigate back to my initial page from the tabs. Adding another view, and this view is going to have my button that when I press it's going to go navigate backwards. And it's just going to take us back to the previous stack. So if we'd come here from somewhere other than home, it would actually take us somewhere different. I think that's important to note and that will come up a bit later as well. So if I click go to tabs, I now have two options to go home. I click that one that takes me home. Next up, I'm going to go ahead and add a user route. Um, I'm actually going to add a file for the username because I want to show you passing parameters. Uh, so when you want to pass something with parameters, you're going to pass uh, name the file. Um, with what your parameter name would be, but the parameter name should be in square bracket brackets. So I'm going to need to go ahead and fix that up in a minute. Um, but for now, I'm just going to sort of show you me setting this up. So I'm going to import use router. That will allow me to navigate back. And I'm also going to import use local um, search params, which is going to allow me to get the username and then show it on screen. So first off, I'm just going to get that router. And next I'll get the params. Then where I've got hello friends, I'm just going to change it to hello and whatever the username is. So in this case, it's from the params. So I can go params.username. It's a good way to sort of pass data between your different screens. Then going to add a button that's going to allow me to navigate back. on press I'm calling router.back then I can add my new stack um, screen which is my user screen it's user slash username because that um, file should actually be in square brackets for username just to match the um, conventions for passing parameters. And that's how it will work seamlessly with the Expo Router. Um, you can check the actual conventions in the Expo documentation. I'm going to link that below. Then I'm going to go ahead and add my um, new links to my two users. So I'm going to have one user test user and one user that's miscoding. And basically when I click on that, it'll take me to that username.tsx file, um, but it'll give me that uh, parameter of either test user or miscoding, depending on which uh, route I click on. So now I'm just gonna go ahead and update that username. And now I can go and click on that and it will show me hello Miss Coding. When I click on go to Miss Coding, I can click to go back home. And I also want to show you just how to add a tab. It's going to be a very simple tab. It's going to be pretty much the same page. I'm going to add a hello.tsx file. 
and import a couple of theme texts and views. And also I'm going to import the link. I'm showing you this just to sort of show you how you could add like a new tab and how that would go in terms of like setting up um, the symbol and things like that. So I've given this the name Hello Tab Screen. I'm just going to return what my, um, my screen's going to look like in terms of its components. It's just going to have a theme view with some text. And also some buttons. I may just pull those from here. The content of the tab is not really that important. What really matters is that um, you can you, you will know how to add a tab and whatever you want to put on that tab can be on that tab. I'm going to delete that one because we're already on the tabs at this stage. And now I'm going to go and show you how to set up like your own symbol. So on this icon symbol T uh, TSX, it's got um, the mapping of material icons to SF symbols. So if you don't have it, the SF Symbols app is available on Mac. You can just download it from the Apple website. I'm assuming you can probably also get it from the App Store. I haven't tried though. Um, and it'll, you can search up um, symbols and what their matching SF Symbol name would be. And then you can look at that link there for material icons to find the corresponding material icon. Um, that means that you'll have like relevant icons for um, to align with sort of Apple UI guidelines and um, Google UI guidelines. So I'm just going to give this one the title of hello and I'm just going to make it person.fill to align with my new icon that I've created. Now if I go to tabs you can see I've got my new tab here. It's hello, it's got all the text. If I go go back to home after clicking on that it actually just takes me back. So if we actually wanted to go fully back to home, we're going to have to go into this um, user page. And when we say go back to home, we want to just dismiss all. That will take us back to the um, top of the stack, regardless of how we've gotten to the page. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial today. If you have, please like and subscribe for more content. All my code will be available on GitHub.